Okay, next I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Raju, again an ex-senior resident with us and an accomplished retina surgeon working at Triglo. Dr. Raju. Yeah. Uh, continuing the note, I would uh, like to convey my pranams uh, to all my teachers here. It's indeed a nostalgic moment uh, to be here. And that's why I made it a point to come to RP Center and uh, present uh, here personally rather than online. So I'd like to thank uh, uh, the Chief uh, Dr. JST sir for giving us this opportunity to share our little experience that we have uh, in front of all of you. Uh, I'll be speaking on uh, something that uh, we rarely encounter, that is the retinal detachment in uh, retinoschisis. And um, this is the brief outline of uh, what I'll be speaking. We'll look at uh, why we have vision loss in retinoschisis and how to manage uh, uh, these patients of uh, retinal detachment in retinoschisis. So we are all aware that uh, there are uh, three types of retinoschisis. It could be acquired, it could be congenital, and it could be secondary. Commonly, we encounter the uh, senile or uh, degenerative uh, uh, retinoschisis. And uh, these are usually benign, but however, they can cause vision-threatening complications. So if you look at this table, very nice table from Jacobic, uh, the differences between the acquired and congenital is with respect to the age of the presentation and how the breaks are. So in uh, the acquired variety, the outer retinal breaks are larger, while uh, in the congenital variety, the inner layer breaks are larger. And the presentation is usually in the first decade in the con congenital variety, while in the acquired, it's usually in the fifth decade. So why do you have vision compromise in these patients with retinoschisis? So it could be because of the posterior extension of the retinoschisis cavity, or it could be you can have outer wall breaks and the schisis detachment, which happens wherein the, the schisis fluid extends into the subretinal space. The next uh, cause for vision loss could be the progressive regmatogenous retinal detachment, wherein you will have breaks both in the inner and the outer layers, which allows the liquefied vitreous to enter into the uh, both the schisis cavity as well as the subretinal space. So this is how a posterior extension would happen. But however, this almost never happens uh, if you observe these patients very closely. And uh, you should resist lasering because these are very, very slow to progress and most of the times they never progress. So no treatment, including laser, has been shown to halt the progression of retinoschisis. The next cause is the uh, the formation of the outer retinal breaks. So once the outer retinal breaks happen, the schisis fluid, which is rich in mucopolysaccharides, actually enters into the subretinal space. And this can start extending. And these are usually large breaks. And the, uh, the, if they may be have, or the breaks may be there for a long time and you may see a ring of pigmentation. And usually, again, these also do not progress very rapidly and re-examination at uh, regular intervals is what is recommended. And this is a photograph which I've taken from Retina today, wherein it shows that this schisis detachment has been there for almost four years and has not progressed. So basically in these patients, you need to follow them up regularly. And this in this study by Bayer et al showed that over a nine year period, most of these patients did not progress. So hence, in these patients, you can follow up them. And only if there's an extension you feel on a case-to-case -case basis, we may have to treat it. So we should use uh, our judgment. So if it is a progression is happening on a case-to-case -case basis, we may have to either consider a laser barricade or consider a buckle in these patients if it is peripheral. The next is the progressive retinal detachment wherein there will be breaks in both the uh, inner layer and the outer layer. And then the fluid enters into the uh, subretinal space. This leads to a retinal detachment and this behaves like a regmatogenous retinal detachment and you can see the corrugated retina in these patients. However, this is very rare to happen. It happens only in 0.5% of the patients with retinoschisis and the patient becomes symptomatic because of the progressive scotoma here. As far as the principles of management are concerned, the treatment is same as for any regmatogenous retinal detachment. Here, the main primary uh, goal, surgical goal is to close the outer retinal wall breaks and you should treat the inner wall breaks also. Collapsing the retinal schisis cavity is optional, but even if you collapse uh, on table, it may still recur or it may happen in the post-operative period again. 
uh, as far as the what are the uh, techniques that you can use to fix this either you can use a scleral buckling or a pass plana vitrectomy if the break is anterior that is the outer retinal wall break is very anterior then you can consider a uh, scleral buckle and uh, however if there is pvr or a posterior location of the break then we can consider a uh, pass plana vitrectomy then what should you do with the inner retinal layer if there is no traction then one can consider retaining the wall and if you want to do a drainage you have to drain it make a drainage retina to be above the outer retinal uh, wall so that you can drain both the fluids however if there is a traction present then it is better to excise the uh, outer uh, the physis cavity wall uh, this is a patient who presented recently to me this is a 50 year old diabetic patient uh, with uh, presented with vision loss in the other eye he had a retinoschisis in this eye uh, and in the other eye he had a 6 by uh, 4 by 60 vision and a large uh, outer wall break so i'll show you sharing with you a small video here uh, this patient also had uh, proliferative changes so i went ahead with a vitrectomy in this patient and he had a very aderent uh, vitreous so you can see here at the time of induction of pvd there were a lot of neovascular uh, fronts which were there and there was some amount of bleeding from there and went about uh, uh, doing the vitrectomy around those fronts and this is the large uh, break and overlying vitreous was quite densely aderent so we had to separate that out how this patient actually did not have any proliferative changes in the other eye so uh, this is more likely because the long standing retinal detachment and the schisis itself can cause uh, the, the this kind of uh, proliferation in some of these patients it can cause neovascularization it has been reported here the neovascular front has been trimmed here so then i went ahead and did the uh, diathermy to the uh, schisis cavity there you can see that i'm uh, uh, excising the schisis cavity now the outer retinal wall break had a rolled up edge and it was a quite a large uh, break the schisis cavity is being removed now you can see the edge of the schisis cavity there then i did the diatomy to the edges of the outer wall break and uh, went ahead and uh, freshened up the edges because the it appeared to be very taut so this last part so it's important to uh, make sure that uh, the all the traction is relieved otherwise uh, there's a chance when you have such a large break uh, the uh, pvr can happen at this edges and again the retina can get uh, lifted up and they are also the epiretinal membrane is patient so we, uh, after injecting uh, bbg we just uh, removed that membrane and went ahead with the fluid air exchange and then uh, we did the laser and injected silicon oil so this is the post operative at 3 uh, weeks this patient required to a vision of 6 by 24 at 3 uh, weeks with silicon oil still in c2 so to mm-hmm. conclude uh, most cases of uh, degenerative retinoschisis require observation only uh, intervention is only required when there is a posterior extension of the schisis detachment or there is a progressive uh, regmatogenous retinal detachment and the main aim of the surgical management is to close the outer wall breaks and the surgical technique chosen must be individualized on a case to case basis thank you very much thank you dr raji
Raju has been a pioneer in developing techniques for uh, posterior segment video recording at low cost. And I think you could see from the recording, he's done wonderful recording. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Raju. Thank you. Now I would call upon Dr. Vishal for the next talk. And Dr. Vishal is also an alumni from our center and he has also been presenting wonderful surgical videos which have uh, won awards internationally. So, uh, can you connect the computer please?